Ah, uh, we. This is Spider Man Team Up 121. And this is the first appearance of. I need to preempt this video by saying that there is not a in of irony in my opinions or claims here. This is totally sincere. This is the first appearance of one of the best characters ever. This is the first appearance of Frogman. It is meant to be Spider-Man and Human Fire team up. But it ends up being the introduction of Frogman. Frogman... He is a D-list character, and he is D-list by design. He's meant to be D-list. He is this schlubby, naive kid who puts on a frog costume and usually falls over. He's this sweet little lad with a kind heart who wants to help out, but... He ends up walking into walls. This is written by Jim Tomatoes. And I count this as part of his Defenders run. I have it in with my Defenders comics. He was writing this book concurrent with the Defenders and Captain America. And I always saw Frogman as a Defenders character, even though he is only in one issue of the Defenders. I'm reviewing this to set up a comic that you will see in my next all video, which I have needed for years. I think, I think it is the last comic I need to... Officially, I've completed my Jim Tomatoes Defenders collection. And as this issue demonstrates, my God, am I very thorough and loose with what counts as a Defenders comic. There isn't a single Defenders member in this. It is just because Frogman is a character in one issue of The Defenders. And I think Frogman, he really works as part of The Defenders' mythology and lore. I suppose the bad guy in this issue has some Defenders ties as well. But this is a Spider-Man and Human Fire team-up. Which isn't the most exciting prospect. We've seen this a dozen or so times before. And they are just stopping a generic robbery here. But then Speed McGee gets involved. This character is one of them recurring Marvel Universe enemies. He has been a member of a bunch of Villayan teams. He started off in the Crime Syndicate, the evil Justice League that the Avengers fought. And then he joined the Insidious Six, the Masters of Evil. But what I know him the most from is Thunderballs. He was a member of the Thunderballs for a sizable portion of issues. Uh, Fabio Nicieza's run. He was fun in that. He had a good little subplot where he would be a hero on the Thunderballs as Speed McGee. And then he would gun out and commit crimes in his odd costume and pretend that it wasn't him. Here we are introduced to Frogman. And really, Frogman is a great character. I'm really not joking. He is a comedy character done well. His backstory is that 
his father was an hard dairy devil villain, and not a very good one, so he retired. And now his son wants to redeem his family name and prove to the world that his family can do some good. Now I am introducing a new feature called Did Michael Brian Benson fuck up this character and or their continuity? And in this case, we are talking about Frogman and Frogman's father. And the answer is yes. I think that the reason Frogman works so well is that he isn't one big joke. There is some seriousness to it. As light-hearted and goofy as the stories can be, he is grounded in a way that someone like Squirrel Woman is not. You can take Frogman at face value. You can take him as seriously as you want. You can, dare I say it, relate to Frogman. Frogman, the character, he is very reminiscent of the sort of thing Jim Tomatoes does to much more renown alongside Kevin Griffin on Justice League International. Frogman, he is a comedic character in a serious setting. The comedic elements are the rest of the world's reaction and involvement with Frogman. The comedy isn't that he is this outrageous, goofy comedy character in these hilarious, hijinxical adventures with evil clowns and pirates. And yes, that pirate story with dead pills really did make a lasting impression on us. I often think of pirates as my worst case scenario for comics trying to be funny. So Frogman, he finds some of his dad's ad equipment and he becomes the newest superhero on the block. Is only real ability, the suit's only ability, is that it has springs on the feet, allowing the wearer to jump high and bounce about. Frogman is a novice and cannot control or utilise this at all. He tends to just bounce around out of control with absolutely no grace at all. So we have Spider-Man and Human Fire. They are in pursuit of Speed McGee and they didn't fare too well against him or his speed powers. Uh, what isn't helping matters is that they are bickering our which of them is going to actually beat Speed McGee. And if you have any sense of basic narrative storytelling, you already know it's more likely Ganon to be Frogman. Here, Frogman, he tries to stop a muggin, but he loses his balance. And instead, they all run off because Frogman looks like a weirdo rather than running away out of fear. And then the odd lady that he saved thinks that he is some commie pervert and yells at him for saving her. He then accidentally gets into a skirmish with a police and Frogman's exploits, they are just endearing. They are endearing to read. Whereas, I admit, the two main heroes here, they are made to look maybe a slight bit too inept. It's not too egregious. 
I think it is justified enough that they are facing a bad guy with powers that they are not really used to dealing with. But them always meeting with failure in every attempt to stop them, it is a bit demeaning for the both of them. I also see a minor plot and concern in that why wouldn't Speed McGee just run away to somewhere else at super speed rather than running away at a pace where the two heroes can actually try and follow them? Uh, maybe Speed McGee is just toying with them. That's probably the line of thought. Uh, there is some nice stuff about Spider-Man and Hugh Monfire's friendship is tucked away during the fight. And then here comes Frogman to save the day. Frogman joins the battle, but he is inexperienced and clumsy. That is his shtick. He bounces around and things didn't go as planned for him. But by chance, Frogman, he manages to defeat Speed McGee purely by luck. He blunders around and bounces back and forth and eventually ends up landing on him during his out-of-control bouncing. It is a happy ending, though. Frogman, he got to save the day in his own way. And Spider-Man and Human Fire are thankful for that. But they encourage him to pack it in and give up on his ideas of being a superhero. Let's hear it for the fabulous Frogman. I love Frogman, so it is a seven thumbs up.